in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone who thinks that we are the most incredible person on the planet. When a person tells us that, how do we feel? Do we feel like it's a sales pitch or do we really recognize the genuine soul saying, I love your soul and I can't live without it in my life? How many people will take the risk to tell you how much they love you? In my lifetime, I've learned that people don't always accept compliments well. They sometimes look at you funny, they sometimes light up, and then they sometimes get hit by other people once they share that private comment that they received in an intimate moment to other people. Those other people start to piss on that comment, and I hate to say it that way, but they start to interfere with loving relationships that are being established at the Lord's hand, not their own. When a person is meeting someone for the first time, sometimes the Lord prompts them to go over and talk to them. I met a lovely woman the other day who just did that. She got herself up out of her vehicle with her little dog, Phoebe, and walked over and started talking with me. She said she felt led by the Lord to come and speak with me. And she felt like I had great energy. And that made me feel good because when you're homeless, you don't always feel like you've got great energy. You're pooped all the time. But in reality, the Lord had also told me to leave the library at that exact moment, to walk the normal walk that I do between my where I hang out during the day and where I go to work a little bit on my life. And openly, what he said was, stop here and pause. I usually get that message because it's time to rest my little old heart and keep that my blood pressure lower and that I don't have a heart attack like my mother worries about me all the time because my father's lineage has that in it. But the reality is that I simply stood there. Then I got an inkling that she was going to come over and talk to me. And sure enough, that's precisely what the Lord led her to do. The only question in his life is, where does the relationship go from here? I reached out. I tried to give her a pineapple, but I kept dropping it so many times because it was more than I could handle to carry with my stuff that I finally just had to lay it down for the next person. When people don't respond immediately, they lose out on opportunities. But in truth, there are some relationships that take many years to put back together. Sometimes it's the love of one that brings about the love of another, and other times it's the passion in one that can ignite the love in another. The reality is that I have never had a love in my life like I feel for one person. I've never felt as much passion. I've never felt as much emotion. I've never cried as many tears. And I certainly have never walked this path of loyalty this long in my life, waiting for that one mouth to be on mine. And openly, it's been a long time. I don't share that to have some inappropriate, immoral person to try and put the moves on me to see if they can become that person or just take away that right for that gal. But the reality is that when a man makes a decision about who he loves and who he wants to marry, he doesn't stay the course at all. It's not true. He completely stays the course. He won't move himself until he has a chance to make that marriage proposal in person. I wrote a marriage proposal and she literally showed up to meet me, but the Lord said she's not fully ready. You've got to walk by. And there was a lot of reasons for that. One, to protect myself a little better. Two, to protect her completely. And three, when I say protect her, I mean that I was harmed that evening. And if she had been with me, she might have been too. I won't tolerate that in this world. I won't have anyone harming my girl. And I don't care if she feels she's my girl or not. According to the Lord, she is in her soul. Not there yet. And openly, she has boys that we have to look out for. And I'm not going to tolerate anyone monkeying with their minds or hearts or souls. But that's what a man who's a pastor, who's sort of a lay minister, is trying to say. That when the Lord leads people together, there's a reason for it. When he leads them apart, there's a reason for it. But he can also lead them back together if they're the right match at the right time at the right moment. But sometimes it takes the initiation of one to ignite the initiation of the other. And how do you figure out when that is? You can only make so many pleas, but at the same time, you have to look to the Lord. You have to look to the Bible verses. It says, when there's a difficulty, you break it down, you talk it out, you move on, and you continue in love and light of the Lord. In life, we've got moments of time to make recordings that make sense, and we have time to make recordings that don't make sense. But openly, when a man is recording, there's always someone who wants to distract. But that's not the point. The point is that when I say I love you, it I mean it literally forever. I don't utter those words just to get laid, and I certainly don't utter those words just to be cool. 
I said it playfully to another a girl the other day just because she was about to buy me a piece of pizza. I really wasn't hungry and I'd eaten a full meal and yet she wanted to do it right then and there and I thought, you know, for a young person who's lovely as she who wants to buy me a little piece of pizza, I will tolerate ingesting it because of course a man like me loves that particular brand of pizza. There's only two brands I can eat that I don't get ill off of and so far that's what I've found. So if she's going to buy me one of those large slices in the district, I'm happy to do it because I like those fellas and they're good fellas for sure. But in reality, when we're talking about love, we're talking about a love that lasts a lifetime. Loves that last a lifetime stay with us. Even though I've not seen my college sweetheart for God knows 20 plus years probably, I can tell you that I still feel a love in my soul for our time together. When I lost my spouse of many years, I literally... When I literally lost my life partner, I still feel love in my soul for her, but I'm not tolerating that people don't recognize other people's rights. In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for people, and sometimes how we make a difference for people is not through silence. It's by showing up, having that overdue conversation, and putting to rights what's gone wrong. In life, there are many distractions that go around us in the community. There are many people who harass, there are many people who steal. And yesterday, when I was at the library, a librarian actually stole my federally protected hat. And when I call it federally protected, it's because it's called a witness protection program hat. It's literally almost a one of a kind hat almost impossible to find another one like it. And someone was actually taking it off me or taking it from me in the night and starting to cut it. I am very careful with my belongings and I don't rip them. I don't allow them to be ripped, but someone has been cutting my bags, cutting my things, cutting my clothes, and openly ripping some of my favorite shirts. I'd like to know what sick individual thinks they have the right to put a hate crime on my life, and if it's someone in law enforcement, they should be fired immediately. If it's someone who's got a mental illness, then they need to be taken to the hospital and charge the ten to $20,000 that hospitals like to charge to shove them in a space with a bunch of other mentally unwell people, give them absolutely no programming at all, other than those occasional visits from a doctor who says, are you planning to hurt yourself? Are you planning to hurt anyone else? Are you planning to hurt me? Or something to that effect. And literally then they leave. It's a ridiculous waste of our money. It destroys our credit. It ruins our lives. It puts us in debt till no end. And openly, it's precisely what people who are trying to harm a life do to destroy a life. You see, there are monsters in this land who think that if they destroy a life, they've done something for God's good. The answer is they have not. What they've done is they've lured over someone's life, they believe they're God in that person's life, and they've forgotten that the Lord handles his own. When the Lord handles his own, he gives gifts to those who submit all. When people don't submit, they don't get any gifts, but they think they're a gift to someone. They're not a gift to the land, they're not a gift to life, they're not giving any gifts to people, and they're literally harming people. They are ruining lives. They are playing games. They are putting people on it. They are using technology to destroy. And openly, that is immoral. The Lord gave us all this knowledge to use for good, and yet it's being used to harm people's lives. Identity theft is when someone pretends to be someone else. It is not the world's right to do that in this land. It is not someone's right to sit around and to listen and to think they're in some sort of cool situation when they're really not. The truth is that homelessness is hard, but it comes about because people lie about their rights. They stole from me. They stole money. They stole information. They stole technology. They ruined computers. They destroyed video cameras. And openly, it didn't ever stop. I even have an old computer that my son used to use that literally was reset somehow by someone to look like it still belonged to my late father. And that could only have been a family member illegally, immorally going into my home and monkeying with my devices. I already know that they deleted hundreds of my resumes that were done in a particular program and they've been destroying other records. I have not found all of my books that I wrote and openly someone has gone through all my thumb drives and literally deleted a lot of personal information, a lot of video, a lot of history of my life, a lot of photos of my own family and all of my kanji camp marketing photographs from my entire 15 years of running that program. It's immoral what they've done to my life. It's illegal what they've done under federal law, and those who think they have a right to play a game in someone else's life and don't understand that monkeying with food and monkeying with life and monkeying with technology and monkeying in period is immoral. 
There's only one set of monkeys I want to see in my life, and those are monkey boys, and the only monkey boys I know belong to the women, the woman that I love. The other soulmate that I have has her own husband, her own children, and too many for me to handle, and frankly, somewhat not handled well. But I say that with love because I wrote a book to honor them both, and that book is being stolen by someone else. In life, we have moments of time to recognize that when we thieve something from someone, we steal the riches that the Lord has planned for us. When we don't listen to God saying, don't do that in that small voice, we lose out on all the plans he's made for us. When we have sex too early, we lose our rights to find the man that is right for us. When we produce children with no father, we put people in a latchkey situation where kids are left unattended to their own devices. And let's face it, kids are not mature enough until they're 24, 25 years old. We've proven that in scientific research. We know this for a fact. We know the brain isn't fully developed till age 24. And openly, it's the morons who don't ever pick up a damn book and read about child rearing that create the bastards of the land. And I say that with love, that these people don't bother to read a book and yet they think they're so mature that they go and have sex someplace, some odd place, and then they produce kids and then they don't rear them correctly. So we end up with more immature men who literally don't violate anything but other people's rights. They pester one and each other in brotherhood. They don't love one and each other in adulthood. And they never learn to show love and regard to a woman in the appropriate way that she deserves. One man, one woman, or in some cases, a different way that the Lord has chosen to allow to still exist in our land. And those of you listening know what I mean, that we have couples of all persuasions and the Lord still allows it. So how dare you human think that you are not in some ill-willed situation if you are demoralizing people that don't fit your mold. The Lord's mold is his mold, not yours. So let's get back to the truth about the Bible, that the Lord God made it all. And if God didn't want those people to exist anymore, he would have gotten rid of them a long time ago. And if you don't think God can't fold your ass in half physically, you have never met God in a way that you should. When God folds you to the floor, you know you've been hit by something. And I promise you, you will never want to be hit like that again because you are humbled to recognize that when God reaps your soul at the end of your life, you can either go easily or you can go full of illness. The illnesses are usually the justification and the reparations that are paid for those who demoralize people, those who lord over people, and those who think they're all about control. Control is then taken from a person in their old age because they failed to protect their health, they failed to stop smoking, they failed to stop drinking, they failed to honor their body as a temple of the Lord. And I have lost 16 inches off my 